Reading from Chaitanya Bhagavat, Vrindavan Das Thakur. And this is Majulila, Chapter 6, titled Meeting Lord Advaita. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishna Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinarmani. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorwani Pacharani Nirisesha Sanyavadi Paskitari Satani Glory, glory to Lord Krishna Chaitan Chaitanya Chandra Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya's pure eternal fame Glory, glory to the servants of Lord Chaitanya, the master of the world Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya's servants who are dear to all. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, the life of the world. O Lord, please place your two feet in my heart. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, the auspiciousness of the world. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya's servants. Glory to Lord Chaitanya, the life of Paramananda Puri. Glory to Lord Chaitanya, who's the life's treasure of Swarup Damodar. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who is dear to Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. Glory to Lord Chaitanya, who is the heart of Jagadish and Gopinath. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, the master of the gatekeeper, Govinda. O oh Lord, please cast your glance of mercy on the conditioned souls. In this way, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed blissful pastimes of Sankirtan with Lord Nityananda and the devotees. Now, please hear of Advaita's arrival. This will be seen in the Majikanda. One day, Lord Chaitanya, in his mood as the Supreme Lord, sweetly ordered Ramai Pandit, Ramai Pandit, go to Advaita's home. Tell him I have come. Tell him that the person he worshipped, wept for, and fasted for has now come. I've come to give devotional service. He should come to me at once. In a secluded place, tell him of Lord Nityananda's arrival. Tell, him, tell all you have seen. Tell him to come here at once. Bring his wife and also offerings to worship me. Placing the Lord's order on his head and in his heart thinking, Hari, Hari. Srivas's younger brother, Ramai, left at once. Overcome with bliss, Ramai did not know the way. Accepting Lord Chaitanya's order, somehow he went to the right place. Ramai Pandit bowed down before Advaita Charya. Filled with bliss, he had no power to speak. By the power of his devotional service, Advaita knew everything, and he thought, the Lord's order has come. Seeing Ramai, Advaita smiled and said, I know the order you bring for me. Respectfully folding his hands, Ramai Pandit said, You know everything. Please come at once. Overcome with bliss, Lord Advaita did not know anything of his own body. Who can understand Lord Advaita's deep pastimes? He knows everything. Still, he speaks many different opinions. He said, where is it said that the Supreme Personality Godhead comes to stay among human beings? In what scripture is it said that the Supreme Lord will descend to Nadia? Your brother Shivas knows all about my devotion, renunciation, and spiritual knowledge. Ramai well knew about Advaita's exalted nature, and therefore he did not reply. He only smiled in his heart. Lord Advaita's nature is unfathomable. Still, saintly persons can easily understand it although the impious cannot. Lord Advaita again said, Tell, tell, O Ramai Pandit, why have you come? Aware of everything, Lord Advaita was peaceful at heart. Weeping, Ramai Pandit said, The person you worshipped, wept for, and fasted for has now come. He's come to give devotional service. He sent me to give you this order. By the Lord's order you should come, bringing your wife and also bringing proper offerings to worship the Lord's six-armed form. Lord Yananda has also come. He is Lord Chaitanya's second form. He is your very life. You already know all this. Do I need to tell you? 
I am fortunate, for I will see all of you together in one place. When he heard these words from Ramai's mouth, had waited to raise his arms and wept. Weeping, he fainted in ecstasy. Seeing this, everyone there became filled with wonder. Returning after a moment to external consciousness, of waited to roared, I have brought, I have brought my Lord. Because of my touch, the Lord left by Kunta and came here, saying this, and weeping again and again, wait to fall to the ground. Hearing that the Lord had appeared in this world, Advaita's devoted wife, who is the mother of the world, wept with joy. Advaita's son, named Achyutananda, wept without stopping, even though he was only a boy. Accompanied by his wife and son, Advaita wept. Around them on four sides, their servants and followers also wept. In what direction was there not weeping? Advaita's home became filled with love for Lord Krishna. Advaita became peaceful. Then he was not peaceful. He stayed in ecstatic trance. His body rocked to and fro. Advaita asked Ramai, What did the Lord say to me? Ramai answered, Come at once. Advaita said, Please listen, O Ramai Pandit. If he acts my, my Lord, then I will have faith in him. If he reveals his powers and opulences, he places his feet on my head. Then I will know he is the Supreme Lord, the master of my life. This is the truth I tell you. Then Ramai said, My Lord, what can I say? If I am fortunate, I will see with my own eyes. What you desire, the Supreme Lord desires. Because of you, the Supreme Lord has descended to this world. Advaita was pleased with Ramai's words. At that moment, Advaita began to prepare for the auspicious journey. He said to his wife, Quickly and carefully make everything ready for worshipping him. Then we will go. Advaita's devoted wife knew the truth about Lord Chaitanya. She carefully prepared fragrances, garlands, incense, and garments. Taking with them milk, yogurt, sara, cream, camphor, betel nuts, Advaita and his wife departed. Advaita forbade Ramai to say anything. He said, don't say anything. Say, the Acharya did not come. Then I will see what my Lord says. I will hide in Nandanacharya's home, and you tell him he did not come. Then I will suddenly come before him. Lord Chaitanya is present in everyone's heart, thus he could see the plan in Advaita's heart. And we're aware that Advaita Charya was coming, Lord Chaitanya went to Srivas Pandit's home. By the Lord's wish, his devotees assembled there. Aware that the Lord had entered an ecstatic trance, everyone became silent and anxious. Then Lord Chaitanya, the master of thirty million demigods, roaring, sat on Lord Vishnu's throne. Nara has come, Nara has come, he said again and again. Nara wants to see my supreme dominion over all. Understanding Lord Chaitanya's hint, Nityananda at once held a parasol over the Lord's head. Also understanding, Gadadhar offered the Lord betel nuts and camphor, and everyone rendered service appropriately. Some recited prayers, others rendered various services. At that moment, Ramai returned. Ramai could not speak. Lord Chaitanya said to Ramai, Nara told you to test me, saying, Nara has come. The Lord gently moved his head. He knows me. Still, Nara always tests me. Nara told you to test me. Nara is hiding in Nandanacharya's home. Quickly, go and bring him. With my own joyful mouth, I will speak to him. Ramai Pandit happily went to Advaita and told him everything. Hearing Ramai's words, Advaita floated in bliss. He went to the Lord. His plan succeeded. Again and again, he and his wife offered Dandabad obeisances from afar. Again and again, they recited prayers. They approached and gazed at the Lord's wonderful and fearless feet, where all the universes rest. Lord Chaitanya's golden form is effulgent and handsome. His handsomeness defeats many millions of comedies. His cheerful face is the master of many millions of moons. He is very merciful to Advaita Charya. His two splendid arms defeat the golden pillars. He's decorated with splendid jewel ornaments. Srivatsa and the great Kastuba jewel decorate Lord Chaitanya's chest. Advaita Charya gazed at Lord Chaitanya's Vijayanti garland and sharp shaped earrings. Lord Chaitanya's splendor and glory have no end. They defeat many millions of brilliant suns. Goddess Lakshmi serves his lotus feet. Anantashesha holds his parasol. 
Which are his toenails and which are the jewels decorating them? No one has the power to tell the difference between them. His form is threefold bending. Smiling and smiling, he plays the flute. Where is Lord Chaitanya? Where are his ornaments? Where are his devotees? Advaita Kacharya could only see splendor and nothing else. Advaita saw Brahma, Shiva, Kartikeya, and all the demigods bowing down before Lord Chaitanya. He saw Narada, Shukadeva, and all the sages reciting prayers with great awe. The goddess, who looked like the Ganga, rode on a shark and offered Dandabhat obeisances to Lord Chaitanya. Then Advaita saw Anantashesh offering prayers with his thousand mouths. He saw effulgent demigods in the four directions. Turning around, Advaita saw thousands and thousands of demigods reciting prayers and repeating the word Krishna as they stood before Lord Chaitanya's feet. When the demigods meditated on the Lord and worshipped him, Advaita saw Lord Chaitanya's feet everywhere in four directions. Gazing at all this, Advaita respectfully offered Dandabad obeisances. Standing up, he gazed at more wonders everywhere. He saw many great hundred hooded serpents offering prayers with raised arms and hoods. He saw many elephants, swans, or horses pulling chariots in the pathways of outer space. He saw millions and millions of serpent girls offering prayers and chanting Krishna, their eyes filled with tears. No place on earth or outer space was unoccupied. Advaita saw many great sages offering prayers. Gazing at Lord Chaitanya's glory and opulence, Advaita and his wife became filled with awe. They had not the power to say anything. Supremely merciful at heart, Lord Chaitanya glanced at Advaita and said, because of your desire, I descended to this world. You worshipped me many times. I was staying in the milk ocean, but when I heard your loud calls, my sleep was broken. Unable to bear to see the sufferings of the conditioned souls, you brought me here to deliver them all. The great multitude you see in the four directions has taken birth in this world because of me. The Vaishnavas that you see here are the objects of loving meditation for Brahma and the demigods. Hearing Lord Chaitanya's words, Advaita and his wife raised their arms and wept. Advaita said, Today my days have become fruitful. Today my desires have borne their fruit. Today my birth and deeds have borne their fruit. Today I have directly seen your feet. Although they have never been seen, although they have never seen you, the Vedas chant your glories. Now you have appeared before a person like me. Your mercy alone can deliver the people. I have no power to deliver them. Speaking these words, Chaitacharya floated in spiritual love. Then Lord Chaitanya said to him, Worship me. Accepting the Lord's order, Advaita perfectly worshipped Lord Chaitanya. First Advaita washed Lord Chaitanya's feet with scented water. Then he anointed the Lord's lotus feet with fragrances. Dipping Tulsi Majaris into sandal paste, he placed them along with Argya on the Lord's feet. He worshipped the Lord with the five upachars, fragrance, flower, incense, lamp, and food. From his eyes streamed tears of love. He offered a lamp with five flames. Again and again he bowed down. At the end he loudly called, Jai, Jai. With sixteen offerings he worshipped the Lord's feet. Then he offered garlands, garments, and ornaments. Seeing through the eyes of scripture, he worshipped the Lord. Then he recited verses and offered Dandabad obeisances. He said, Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmanya Hitaya Cha, Jagat Hitaya Krishnaya, Go Vindaya Namo Namaha. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Krishna, who is the worshipful deity for all Brahminical men, who is the well-wisher of cows and brahmins, who is always benefiting the whole world. I offer my repeated obeisances to the personality of Godhead known as Krishna and Govinda. Speaking these words, Advaita offered respectful obeisances. Then he recited prayers from many different scriptures. He said, Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who is the master of all lives. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who is an ocean of mercy. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who makes the words of the devotees true. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, 
who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, descended to this world. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, whose heart is delighted by Goddess Lakshmi's beauty. And glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who is decorated with the Kastuba jewel and Srivat's mark. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who revealed the Hare Krishna mantra. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who enjoys pastimes with his devotees. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who rests on Ananta Sesh. Glory, glory to Lord Chaitanya, who is the shelter of all living entities. O Lord, you are Vishnu, you are Krishna, you are Narayan, you are Matsya, you are Kurma, you are eternal. O Lord, you are Varaha, you are Vamana, yuga after yuga you protect the Vedas. You kill the Rakshashas, you are the life of Sita. You give a benediction to Guha, you deliver Ahalya. You came to this world for Prahlad's sake, killing Hiranyakashipu, you accepted the name Narsinga. You are the crest jewel of all the demigods. You are the king of Brahmins. You eat all the offerings in Jagannath Puri. Searching for you, the four Vedas wander from place to place. Hiding from them, you have come here. You have descended in this world to begin the Sankirtan movement. In the countless universes, there is nothing but you. Shiva and Parvati are overcome by tasting the nectar of your lotus feet. With a single mind, Goddess Lakshmi serves your feet. With his thousand mouths, Ananta Shesh sings the glories of your feet. Brahma always worships your feet. The Shruti, Shritis, and Puranas sing the glories of your feet. Your feet crossed beyond Satchaloka. Your feet placed a great treasure on King Bali's head. The Ganga descends from your feet. Shiva earnestly places your feet on his head. Advaita's intelligence defeated many millions of Brihaspatis. Therefore, Advaita perfectly understood the pure and exalted position of Lord Chaitanya. As he glorified Lord Chaitanya's feet, Advaita floated in tears flowing from his own eyes, and he fell down before the Lord's glorious feet. And Lord Chaitanya, who was the super soul in everyone's heart, placed his feet on Advaita's head. When Lord Chaitanya placed his feet on Advaita's head, a great sound of jai, jai suddenly arose. Seeing this wonder, everyone became agitated. Everyone made a great tumult of hari, hari. Some rolled on the ground, some clasped their arms, clapped their arms. Some embraced, some loudly wept. All the desires of Advaita and his wife were now fulfilled. Placing the Lord's feet on their heads, they attained all they had wished. Then Lord Chaitanya commanded Advaita, O Nara, please chant my holy names and dance. Accepting Lord Chaitanya's order, Lord Advaita, manifesting different moods of devotion, danced. The charming sound of Kirtan arose, and Advaita danced before Lord Chaitanya. One moment he danced enthusiastically, another moment he danced gracefully, another moment he held a straw between his teeth, another moment he ran in a circle, Another moment he fell and rolled on the ground. Another moment he deeply sighed. Another moment he fell unconscious. When he heard the kirtan, he could not stay still. He danced in ecstasy. At the end, he became like a humble servant. No one could understand his inconceivable power. Running and running, he came to Lord Chaitanya's side. Seeing Lord Nityananda, he knitted his brows and laughed. Laughing, he said, Oh, Nityananda, it's good you have come. For some days I've not seen you. Today I will tie you up. Where will you go then? One moment he spoke like a lord. Another moment he spoke like an intoxicated person. Nichinanda laughed at Advaita's activities. Actually, they were both the same person, now manifested in two for Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Previously I explained that Lord Nichinanda, assuming many different forms, serves Lord Chaitanya with great happiness. In one form, he describes his Lord. In another form, he meditates on him. In another form, he becomes his bed and parasol. In another form, he sings songs glorifying him. He is fortunate who knows that Lord Nichinanda and Lord Advaita are not different, and they both descended to this world from the world of spirit. Please see that their quarrels are all pastimes, are, not the, inconceiv are the inconceivable playing of the Supreme Lord himself. They love the Lord as Shiva and Anantashesha love him. They're both dear to Lord Krishna, Chaitanya. 
Anyone who, not understanding their quarrels, takes sides, bowing down before one and criticizing the other, perishes. Seeing Lord Advaita's dancing, the Vaishnavas became plunged in an ocean of bliss. Then Lord Chaitanya commanded Advaita to stop dancing. Placing the Lord's command on his head, Advaita stopped at once. Taking the garland from his own neck, Lord Chaitanya gave it to Advaita. Laughing, Lord Chaitanya said, Ask for a boon, ask for a boon. Hearing these words, Advaita gave no reply. Ask, ask, again and again, Lord Chaitanya demanded. Then Advaita said, For what more should I ask? The boon I desire, I have already attained. I have danced before you. In this way, I have attained all the desires of my heart. O oh Lord, what more can I desire? I have directly seen you in this incarnation. You know what I desire and what I do not desire. With transcendental eyes, you can see what I do not desire. Moving his head, Lord Chaitanya said, Because of you, I came here. In home after home, I will preach the Sankirtan movement. The whole world will sing my glories and dance. The devotional service that Brahma, Shiva, Narada, and all the sages and demigods perform austerities to attain, I will freely give away. This I tell you. Then a Lord Waitat said, If you will give away devotional service, then please also give it to the women, sudras, fools, and other lowly beings. The sinners who are intoxicated with pride of their learning, wealth, noble family austerity, and other things, and who try to stop your devotees and devotional service, will burn in hell. But your devotees, even down to the chandalas, will sing your holy names and dance. Hearing it waits his birds, Lord Chaitanya roared, I accept all that you say. It's all true. The whole world has now become a witness who affirms the truth of these words. The Lord is indeed merciful to the lowly and foolish. Thus the Chandalas and other lowly pink people sing the Lord's glories and dance, while the Bhattas, Misras, and Chakravartis mock and criticize. They may study the scriptures, they may shave their heads, but their intelligence is dead. Blaspheming Lord Yananda, they run to hell. By Lord Advaita's power, the whole world attained pure love for Lord Krishna. Thus I have now described in the Majjakanda. Goddess Saraswati, the mother of the worlds, knows all the conversations Lord Chaitanya and Lord Advaita had about pure love for Lord Krishna. Entering the devotee's tongues, Goddess Saraswati sings the limitless glory of Lord Chaitanya. I bow down before the feet of all the Vaishnavas. I pray that I will not offend them. Lord Advaita Acharya and his wife thus attained the fulfillment of their desire. The two moons, Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Sri Nichananda, my life and soul, I, Vrindavan Das, sing the glories of their feet. <laughs>